So, um, everything you need to know about how to get started is on this uh, this web page. So, uh, for, the, for the first part of the lecture. So, um, it's the very first part of the, uh, the handle session. I will speak a bit about NC Dataset, which is a tool that uh, should manipulate the NCDF us. And uh, in the, the second part, the, uh, uh, Nat will, will uh, uh, is his other packages, which are some of them which are built on NC Data. So that's the reason why, why we start. Uh, so here, um, on the NC Datasets package, uh, there are some, uh, some tutorials. But, but maybe, um, just to be sure that I have everybody here on the same page, uh, I want you to, uh, to follow here's instruction on, on, uh, on this, this web page, okay? So, uh, obviously you don't see it here. So, follow instructions. So these are the instructions in order to get started. So this, uh, on this web page you will see um, what, you, what you need to do to get Docker started. But I already use Docker sometimes uh, this during this week, maybe this works as well. Uh, but you can also use your, the native web package. Okay. So um, So if you are here, the idea is that unless uh, you already participated in the hands-on session yesterday, you have already uh, the uh, Docker image loaded. But if not, that's the command that you need to use in order to load the image. Okay. And, uh, and then as before, you go to the uh, directory containing the notebooks and the image, and then run uh, start the Docker by copy pasting this command. Okay. And then you paste this uh, this web address, uh, the one starting with HTTP 127 and so on. So the full H uh, full address you need to open, uh, paste it in the web browser. It's not automatically you need to paste it manually. But if you want to use uh, uh, directly Julia's package manager, you can do also as well. Um, and here are the instructions that you hear. A very important thing and not to uh, forget is that uh, you change the directory, you need to activate the environment and then instantiate all the packages. That's very important. Okay. So, and if this, all this works, you should have a page like this. We should have a notebook, the notebook page. So maybe uh, just raise hands if you have a, a... So, is it clear for you what to do? Okay. But I guess you're not there yet, right? So you are still, uh, still loading the image maybe or still uh, open, open it up. So if you have any error message, please <coughs> raise your hand and then I can have a look. Uh, what might be going on. So here, um, this one. Yeah, go this one. Uh, no, this one. Uh, is this the front of the drive? Okay, this one. Yeah. Ja, 
So you should have a file which is called SST Mets. SST Mets. Do you have it? Can you can you uh, expand to find it to just to yes, show sure. sure. it's end with slice one? But I yeah, it must be this one. Yeah, yeah. okay. When it's each direction. Somebody needs to pen that? So who already got to this page? Okay. Okay, very good. And who has some uh, uh, who has some issues or error message before Just downloading packages? Have to install first few packages. That's all. Ah, okay, but you don't want to talk English? No. Ah, okay, then yeah, yeah then yeah, can yeah, 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 Oh yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this file here, SSD is in my case this this file is missing SSD is in my case <laughs> for no reason. No, no, yes, that's cool too. Okay, yeah, um, downloading stuff unfortunately takes some time, especially if the, uh, the Wi-Fi is not that fast. That was actually the basic idea of the Docker image that you have everything uh, already, uh, already uh, in the Docker image. But okay, um, so in the example here, um, I showed you a bit how to access data from, from CMEMS and from NAVA. And unfortunately, uh, they, they require more and more uh, authentication, so they require you to, to register to access the data. They are still free, but it's, it's, it takes a bit, it's a bit more complicated for, uh, to, to access the data. And um, so the idea is that. Um, so I don't know if you received the message, but I asked that, that you register for uh, CMEMS and now the Earth data. I don't know if the message has passed around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so if you have a CMEMS username and password, the idea is that you can put it here. Yeah? But I already anticipated that maybe some of you not, not have uh, CMEMS credentials. So um, you will, can just skip these steps. Yeah? And uh, uh, I already uh, prepared you a slice of the CMEMS data on the USB drive. Okay, so this save us also to do some downloads. So the, um, but just to let you know what is the essential step you need to do. When you have a, a URL, actually to a data set from CMEMS, over distributed over opened up, you have to put here in front your username, colon, password, at, and then the address. So that's Straight, relatively straightforward. That's the usual HTTP uh, basic authentication method that that works for. Uh, for C. 
And this, this command actually uh, does it automatically. So if you have username and password, uh, it's like this. So here, at this place, you would typically remove this and put your username and password there. It all doesn't work for you. Uh, it's, this is just for me. I don't want to expose my username and password here. <laughs> um, and therefore, I use some environment variables to, uh, to, get, to get these, these credentials. <coughs> but don't worry about this. We have, we have the netcdf file already on the uh, uh, already there okay so it's a quite big data set and I just downloaded I just extracted for you uh, the very first slide okay so uh, so obviously you cannot close the NetCDF file if you didn't open it but so if you uncomment this line you should be able to execute this one okay so at first we load the packages so this is very important. We always need to load the uh, modules, NC data sets, Python statistics, and queries. And if this is done, let's jump directly here. Okay. This one, let's put a, a hashtag in front of it. Um, and we are opening the next one. Okay. So just... Uh, just to know, did it work for you? Yeah. Well, just let me know if you have some, some issues. I have a problem with five blocks. I'm always having this problem, otherwise. Ah, but you didn't use the Docker image, right? I am using this. Oh, you could have used it. Uh, you know, the 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 file. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, this yeah. is with, if you don't Yes, yeah, Is this an M1 pack? Uh, I think so. Because if it's an M1 pack, there's usually a problem with. Uh, there's always a problem with compiler and pattern. If you're not installing the correct way, not to and the correct way. You need both to be either Intel or both to be uh, M1. Okay, you don't have to do that. Can I just Oh, and
we see uh, very, very basic things like uh, the uh, um, uh, like the units which are defined here. So uh, sometimes, as an oceanographer, we like to work in degrees Celsius, but uh, other people like uh, work more, more in Kelvin, and so here that's the system temperature possible in Kelvin. <coughs> and when you want to, uh, when you just want to know, um, so the S actually behaves like a dictionary. Yeah? And uh, a dictionary is a type which associates some string, for example, with a value. Okay? And if you want to know all the values, uh, all the keys in the dictionary, you can use the key function. And it gives you all the, <coughs> all the variables. And then later on, you can then access a variable using GS and, test, uh, and then the, the key. Okay. So if you, if you execute this line, you NC var would still be um, an NCF variable on this. It will not yet load uh, the data. And it's, uh, you will still have all the attributes. So if you want to access one attribute, one particular attribute, let's say units, yeah, you would use it with NCVAR attribute units. <coughs> and so in a well-behaved well NetCDF file, you have units defined and all the attributes like standard names and and uh, uh, long name, but sometimes you need to query, okay, is long name defined or not? And that's for instance the function has key. Has key, um, so here, do you have the attribute of, do you have the attribute foo? And it says false, but it has the attribute units. Okay, so and then, um, uh, any questions so far? <coughs> what is your... <coughs> so, who, who, just uh, just as an idea, who of you already also use NetCDF files? Okay, that's uh, and uh, and uh, um, what kind of operations you typically do when you use NetCDF files, like uh, I don't know, subsetting, aggregating, or computing averages, or you're using them to to force a model or something. I'm right, just wondering. Used for subsetting. Subsetting, and okay. Uh, ocean color. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. And so, um, actually, NetCDF is really, really well optimized for this use case of subsetting. Okay, so uh, in the uh, um, if you have a really large array on disk, yeah, you can easily subset it without loading all all the uh, all the data in memory. So that was one of the primary use case where it was optimized for. And if you, uh, let's check the size of NC bar. Yeah. And let's see if you want to, to load a subset. Just uh, for instance, just the uh, 10 by 10 elements you can do is uh, like this. Okay. But another use case, so this is subsetting with indices. Another thing that uh, I recently implemented it in NC data sets that you can also subset by uh, by by longitude and latitude value. So that's something that's uh, um, so if you want to have all the data, let me check the bounding box. Let's say from minus ten, and twenty, and. So if you can also subset by longitude latitude, so typically you, you, you're saying here, I want all uh, longitude data between minus 10 and 10 degrees, so everything which satisfies this first condition and it satisfies this condition. And you can also do some basic operation on this, like uh, um, 
Like it, it's, if you have time, for instance, you say, okay, I want to have every uh, every data set, for instance, I'll just leave it here. Just make another example. So, um, so time is also defined in the NetCF file, and you want to extract a given months, for instance. Yeah, you can just say dates months time equal to one. This will uh, uh, get the all the data. I have a question for this one. Does this work for open data as well? Yes. So, yes. so, so basically, if uh, I open, if I wanted to retrieve data from an open data, and I did this selection, I wouldn't need to down. I, it would just select on the server itself this particular the next level, this particular array, this particular array, and then I can just download it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And it also works on, on the whole NetCDF file. So, for instance, you can also. Uh, let me check. It also works. Um, sorry for scrolling. It also works on the whole. Whole data set. And then you would have, uh, it will select, it will subsample all the variables. And if you want to just then save it to disk, you would just, you can just write, uh, then it will save all the. Uh, all the data to, to this. So typically, if you have a large open up, uh, you have an opened up server with a large data set, so this is a uh, convenient way to get just the subset. So, any questions so far? Or uh, maybe I, I uh, was a bit fast. Do you want me to? I will just suppress the output here so that you see all the lines simultaneously. It may be easier if you need to to copy things. So here we're subsetting via indices. Um, this, is, this is great if you want to really be precise on the, on the grid cells that you want to keep or not. You can also select based on coordinates, longitude, latitude, that's typically the most of the time you, uh, you are interested more in this. You can also apply some Julia functions to uh, um, to uh, to uh, to the coordinates. So, for instance, if you want to apply the date months function to the time coordinate, you can do it. Like this. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, I'm getting an error on the right function. So, so do I. It says it's not supported on non is bits array. Uh, let me check on which function. And so, can you scroll up so the DS stop work, work well? Yes. Okay, I need to Yes, yes. Run this one. Yeah, so this, yes, the system itself, the process, the process. Yeah. 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 That that can be. It can be. I I don't. Um, so it is only tested on the Intel okay. uh, CPU. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised. <laughs> Did you also have an error on this? I'm going to do this ah, now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I had the same thing. Also. It is also an ARM processor? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we found out. ARM, please like this bug. It's here. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, okay. Yeah. What is this before the part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the first index, right? The dates don't work, is it? Mm -hmm. Does it mean like this? <coughs> Uh, Alex, yeah, yeah, there's, there's another, there's another one, that's not recording. It's in expression. Now on the right. Oh, sorry. I think I have a point of relation. Okay, which doesn't have to tell us. There's just one, what is it? This is the only one. So... Uh, 
kind of weird. Everything up to this moment working perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to be investigated, I don't yeah, know. But the error is uh, really strange. <laughs> we don't need it, we don't need it anyway, so, so yeah. Okay, so... <coughs> and, and the last step I would call for today is actually how to... Uh, to, uh, um, to plot, to make a nice plot of the CISPR temperature from, from the NCF. We're just uh, uh, plotting using picolor mesh. It's really similar to picolor, but it's a bit faster. Using long latitude, and replace all the missing values by now. And so they appear white on the, on the, on the plot. And then we are... Uh, uh, also setting the correct aspect ratio that's the mute that's mute gene is not so much of a um, just a note for the plotting. Um, I because uh, how, Julia some Julia sometimes does it slightly differently. Can you scroll up a bit? Uh, Julia Julia basically Julia uh, deals with missing data uh, differently from compared to other programming languages. So um, what happens is that quite often when you load the net the data from NetCDF, quite often instead of none for data for locations that don't have value, you have missing. Uh, PyCord <coughs> and all and other Python packages that you use to plot it would not recognize uh, missing values. So you have to convert the missing values to NAN data, non data. So you have to use the function no missing. Uh, in order, yeah, no missing. It's it's very important. It's very important that you guys remember this for plotting because um, more than I've been tripped up on this many many times before. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, It's a and the error message. If you forget this, is not not clear at all what's going on. If you uh, if you forget it, it's uh, something like. Uh, yeah. It cannot be converted to flow, basically, yeah. because missing its its own data type is separate from none. Sure. So, just no. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I I don't have any errors, but I don't have any plots. <laughs> In fact, when I'm writing here, also I think it's from the most common errors. My plot don't show. <laughs> How can you use it? Uh, you use the FDS code, you have to call it. You have a. Uh, uh, for Wave Mackey? Uh, it's not so this pipeline. Uh huh. No, it's a PR data science that I think I can build. And. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, you cannot show that figure. Last year, she put missing. VS Code works a bit different. So I guess now. No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. That works. Okay. So let me close all these things. Terminate. Terminate. And let me share my screen.
see if he was wrong with it. Uh, oh, no. Okay. Screen? Oh yes, I'm sharing screen. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so um, hi everybody. Um, yeah. Um, so my, hi everybody. So I'm going to continue off from. Um, I'm, go, I'm going to. Con I'm going to. Uh, take over for now. Um, yeah, I just want me to. Uh... Yes, probably. Okay, so today I'll be talking about creating packages and also about retrieving and analyzing geophysical data or in this case geophysical data is satellite observations um, and also potentially reanalysis data as well like ERA5 or MERA2. But I also know that a lot of us here are very new to Julia as a whole. So I want to introduce some concepts that I think will be important later on down the line when you are creating, developing your own packages in Julia. Um, so the chief of this is that um, I want to, I want, yeah, I want to show, introduce you to two packages. Uh, one is GeoRegions, which is selection of geographic data. The second one is NASA precipitation, which is uh, retrieval of uh, precipitation data from NASA. But I want to use these ex examples uh, on how I created my packages, so you can, you guys can do it more easily next time. So yes. Managing the first one I'm going to do right now is managing package and project environments, uh, which is basically um, when basically Julia works in this framework where you where you are able to activate different environments for different projects, and in different environments you can install different package versions. Um, the the fiddling of this is somewhat tricky and took me a few months to get a handle around uh, because there wasn't also because I, three years ago there wasn't anyone to guide me through along with this process but I wanted to I wanted to do this uh, for you guys so um, it's easier next time um, when you are doing your own projects in Julia yes and then uh, based on the pro the packages that I'm doing uh, I'm going to show you I'm going to guide you through my process on how I created the packages and maybe even out sketch an outline for a future package that I'm planning to use. Um, but using that as an example to show you guys how I went through the process of creating a package. So, first one, standardizing projects. So, um, the, thing, the thing is that a Julia project or environment, in a Julia project, you will always have a project.toml and a manifest.toml. These TOML files define the packages that you have in your current project. So when you open your Julia, so when you go, uh, let me increase the screen size, some more, okay. When you open Julia, and then you have the, when you do the square bracket, so if it's it's basically you basically um it's this symbol. If you do this symbol here, this square bracket symbol here, you do this square bracket symbol, you will go into the package management environment. Where the package management environment, you are able to um you are you are basically able to add packages to a project. You are able to specify what version of the project of the package you want to add to your project. You see here that this is V1.8. This is basically, um, this is basically the version one, this basically, um, so basically when you start Julia, the default environment is the version 1.8 environment, and it is found in um, the dot, in your home directory, in the dot Julia, um, if you go to dot, if you go to your home directory, if you go to dot Julia, and you go to environments, 
you will see that you will have different versions or if you have different versions of Joomla, you will have different versions and you will have version 1.8, version 1.9, for example. If you go to version 1.8, you, you will again see project and manifest. And inside this project and manifest, when you type status, you will see a list of all the projects uh, not project, you will see a list of all the packages that you have installed in this particular environment. Um, so, status, so basically, what, so basically, the project contains a package list that you have, a list of packages that you can load in Julia, whereas the manifest contains the packages, the packages that you see in projects, and other packages which are dependencies of this project. So basically, for example, if my package uses NASA, if my package NASA precipitation uses NC datasets, and I add NASA precipitation to the project, in the manifest, you will see NASA precipitation and you will see NC datasets. But you will not see NC datasets in the project because I did not add NC datasets to my and to my project environment, but my package depends on NC datasets, so it's inside the manifest. So, um, is that like kind of is that kind of clear to everyone? Yeah. So in the project you have a package list, and the manifest you have package plus dependency plus also version, uh, version environment, version environment where you get your package from. So for example, so if I went to um, the manifest, sorry, too many screens, if I open the manifest, you will see a list of all the dependencies here, and then if you have some special, your some special link to what uh, different special, pro uh, different to your project, yeah, you have a special version for a certain package, it will also show up in manifest. So, how, so, Basically, why am I showing you this? The reason why, I'm, why I want to show you this is because um, if you want to make your project duplicable for other people, I prefer not to use Docker. I prefer to use uh, project and manifest files that will specify the exact uh, package uh, versions, package types where you use, and if and so. So, in, in when you create a project, if you want other people to access your project exactly what it is, you have to use, you have to commit your manifest and your project into the folder, into Git, and then you sh when you share it, other people will download the project and the manifest. You instantiate everything in the package environment. It will install all the, it will store exactly the same versions of the packages that you have used onto uh, your own computer as well. So in this way, you can ensure that your projects are reproducible. Um, the thing is, this is for projects. This is for projects um, where this this is for uh, projects uh, like when you do a scientific project, etc., etc. You want to use a certain version of a package, etc., etc. But when you create packages, you will notice that in the repository, only the project is committed to the GitHub and not the manifest. Um, so, um, because, pa because, for, because for packages, packages are designed to, in Julia, are somewhat designed to be backwards compatible. So, quite often designed to be backwards compatible, so you can't have something as specific as a manifest inside, when inside a package, or at least when you share your package with the rest of the Julia community, you will only be sharing the project dot not the manifest dot not the manifest dot uh, In your local computer, when you run and test your package, you will have a manifest in your local computer, but you will not be pushing that to GitHub. But if but then this is the difference I feel between a package and a project. In a project, you want everything to be exactly reproducible. Um, that's why you need the manifest to be committed, and in a, but in a package you don't necessarily need that because you have different package versions, etc., etc. So, um, but okay, but for in the repository, 
um, if in the repository shown here, this this here, um, in the in the GitHub here, uh, if if I uploaded my slide, I uploaded my notebooks and everything into this repository. If you guys want to, uh, if you guys want to follow what I'm doing step by step, um, you should go. You should cl just clone it into. Uh, just just clone just clone the project, and then uh, we can go through everything step by step as well at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and then you, uh, and then one thing I was gonna highlight is that you see that in the repository that you guys are cloning, uh, in the repository that you got, you guys are cloning, the manifest is also committed because I want this to be reproducible for everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here for another thirty seconds. For, so that you guys can get the link and then you guys can clone it into whatever. Can you just download? Uh, if you don't have Git installed, can you just download? Uh, I mean, you can, yeah, you can copy the website, this link, go to the website and then download, download the code. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we found it. Ah, you found it as well. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the health, health. Ah, okay. Basically, we were subsetting the the wrong. Yeah, you were were saving, I guess. Yeah, you you subsetting the variable. This works, but you cannot save the variable as such. Yes. You have to save the. Exactly. So we subset the base. Yeah. Oh, it, it looked like a really weird error because this war this bit is really a really low-level concept in Julia. It's exactly. Really yeah. Well, it's, it's it's useful, right? But you Every time really we, we, we we break, yeah. break something, um, it's I'm useful. Sure is that correct? Right? Yeah, yeah. No, next time I <laughs> see, <laughs> I will think about it. <laughs> It's working. Okay. Uh, and then drag 
this, drag this, and then after that. Packages. Uh, what you have to do is you have to activate when you when you when you open Julia, you always default to the uh, you always default to the automatic Julia environment, which is version one point eight or whatever version you have. Can everybody see this? So if you want to activate the project inside this folder, you have to activate dot dot become folder. You activate the project inside here. And then, okay. if you and then in order to get everything working, you type instant shape. And because I've already instant shaded, nothing pops up. But you guys should do instant shape in order to install and download everything. In order to install the packages that are here and compile them. So do instant shape. Yes. <laughs> Annoying. The <laughs> weapon Can you minimize in the. This one? Yeah, very good. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Is the instant shape working? Instant shape. Ah, instant shape. What did you do? I don't know. Not work. That's it. Is it? So now we have ah, okay. so the, uh, the so the, the name is the Julia Bio and that's that's a okay. Okay, if if instant if nothing pops out in instant shape, uh, type update.
The photo was correct. This one, yeah, yeah. Yes. The photo was correct because you yeah. installed NC and NRC and uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Currently. Mm -hmm. Circle, circle, circle. Yeah. 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 No, it's not 
the manifest and the project Thomas, uh, the manifest the manifest and the project basically clone exact the exact duplicates of the packages that I use for this project and um, I was going to go through with dr. Watson basically dr. Watson is a tool is a Julia tool that you can use to manage your project workflow so you can create a project with uh, your project and your manifest already and basically create an empty project and manifest um, in order and then you just and then you can go in and activate and add your packages to that particular to your project etc etc it basically streamlines the workflow but I don't think I have time to go through this right now but this is probably good for future use like uh, once you're more familiar with the concept of package and packages and environments then Dr. Watson is very good at helping you manage that particular workflow because the aim of Dr. Watson is reproducibility of your projects in, in essence but I don't think I'm necessarily going to go through this right now okay so um, I'm just I, I was going to make this an exercise um, but I don't, I don't think we necessarily have the time right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you the differences between, you, you can install different packages in different projects and when you open two different terminals with different, inside different environments, you can actually, uh, you can actually see that if you install different versions of your package, you can actually uh, you you will be able to see this be reflected inside uh, your environment. So, for example, mm, so let's let's try this. Okay. So, for example, um, in this part, in this particular, in this part, I've already uh, in this particular uh, project, I already have NASA precipitation version two installed. For example. But if I went to another, if I went to another, if I went to a separate folder, and then what I did is that I activate this particular one. I'm just going to randomly create an environment, and then I add NASA precipitation um, zero point one. So base. Um, if I remember correctly, at basically mean, means the version that you means that you want to specify a specific version. So NASA precipitation at zero point one. So 
And you see yeah, that the version cheaper. of NASA precipitation that I installed is version 0 0.1. Point two, which is, but because I specified as version 0 0.1, it can be version 0 0.1 point something, but in the latest version is 0 0.1 point 2. And then what I want to show you is that um, when I do this, so I loaded NASA precipitation in this particular uh, environment, and for this one, I will load NASA precipitation in this particular environment. So, well, the difference between version 0 0.1 and there's a, there are differences in version 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 in the, how I call my functions. Um, it's reflected in the documentation as well. So, for example, I merge final day. So, this, this indicates that I'm downloading the final product for daily I merge data in version 0. And this is the documentation. This is the doc. So basically, if you so basically you can when you in packages you should be creating your own documentation so that when you type help, uh, when you type help and then you type your function name, you should get you should be able to see the keyword arguments and stuff that you're using. So for example, in version zero point two, these are the keyword these are the important keyword arguments. But in version zero point one. No, uh, sorry. If you question mark. Type question mark, you get help. I merge final day. You see that the keyword arguments are different. So in so this so this in this part in so this particular instance shows you that I have installed different packages, different versions of packages in different environments. If you call them, if you call them separate, if you call in when you activate different environments, you will call the different versions of the packages. But say, um, and the last thing I want to emphasize is that when you load a package, the package is loaded in this version for the entire session. So, in example, I'm in this part, this particular project, I have version zero point one. If I went back to, if I went to activate my original one, and then I typed using NASA, NASA precipitation, and then I typed, I asked for help, and I asked for the version, you will see that it's still the old version, the one that initially loaded, because it has already been loaded. So if you want to load the new, if you want to load another version of the package, or that I have already loaded, you have to close this instance and you have to open a new one. This just for your, this just, uh, so you guys don't get tripped up next time. But um, that's basically a very, very short, it's a, it's a quick and dirty summary of package environments and how you handle them. And um, there's a lot more to learn. There's quite a bit more to learn about this. But I just wanted to give you some examples of uh, I just want to give you some examples because I think this is important in in best practices or not or in learning how to use Julia easily. Yeah, but um, that's what I wanted to that's what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to have you guys do it, but some of you guys are having problems downloading uh, it's on the packages right now. Um, but I will upload the slides and you can try this yourself at your own time. But I just wanted to show you guys. Uh, I just wanted to show you to show you guys um, these differences. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, one thing. Yeah, you can. If this is an alternative to going into the terminal and be like activate the current environment. If the using Doctor Watson, you can use the function quick activate, and then you can quick activate. For example. Uh, if in my project, my project Tomal contains the name of the project, like so. For example, the, in this particular case, the name of the project is tro is Tropicals. So I can uh, quick, I can do a quick activate of Tropicals, and then you just activate the entire project for me. Uh, but that's Doctor Watson. That's uh, a functionality of Doctor Watson. I thought I have. Uh, I thought things would be a bit more smooth, so I thought we'd be able to get to this. But uh, it's just something that I thought you guys should know in the end. Yeah.
So we can go. So now, uh, now that we've, um, now that we've kind of like I've given you a brief introduction of uh, packages and ho and hopefully some of you at least have managed to uh, activate and instantiate and install the project without problems. We can go to the main thing, which is uh, Geo Regions and NASA Precipitation. So geo, the first one is Geo Regions, which deals with gridded data. So a lot of product, uh, this is not always the case, but in a lot of the products that I use, they are gridded products in longitude and latitude. So Geo Regions helps me to helps me to uh, spe helps me to specify a particular geographic area. So if I have gridded data, for example, gridded data in this this is uh, just an example. If I had, if I, I could specify a geographic area, a boundary here, like the boundary in blue, and then I, and then my purpose of the project is that if I have this boundary in blue, I can just extract all the data that's within this boundary in blue, and then um, I can do whatever the hell I want to. I can do mean, I can do whatever. Yeah. So the important thing, of course, is that you have an identifier, you have a name for the region. So I, so ID is like a shorthand. Name is like the region. Indian Ocean, subcontinental India, whatever. Apparent region, which is the default is the globe. So apparent region is a region that encompasses this region you're specifying. The default is globe. For other reasons, you may choose it to be different, but it has to be bigger uh, than this than the region than this particular geographic area you want to analyze. And then you have two ways of doing this. You can either, you can either specify a rectangular region in longitude and latitude. Or you can specify a shape where you give it a vector coordinate of longitudes and a vector coordinate of latitudes that specifies an entire shape that you can uh, pick up in a longitude and latitude region. So uh, in your project folder, you should have pre-compiled and uh, ideally you should have pre-compiled or and in installed all the packages that you've needed. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to open the notebook joeregions.jl uh, and test out the functionality uh, using Pluto. So um, uh, Julia clean using Pluto. Uh, I think I might have forgotten to ask you guys to download and install. Have Have you guys downloaded and installed Pluto as well? Yeah, those of you who have downloaded and installed Pluto, you can use Pluto and then Pluto.run. <coughs> and what Pluto.run does is that, yeah, you basically open, you basically goes to the browser and you open stuff. And you, joeregions.jl, joeregions.jl, and just open it. Um, okay, so what my what I usually do is that I usually have I usually in this case I'm activating the current project and then I'm using a set of packages. Um, I think Gail showed this in particular yesterday, but his method his method was that he liked to do this at the he liked to put this at the end of the notebook. I like to put this at the front of the notebook because it's more in sequential order because you have to load a package first before you run anything else. Um, so yes, the so yes, uh, that's and also um, this loading coast lines. Uh, the the one thing that um, a lot of, the one thing is that uh, I don't think is that, is that in this particular project I've also provided you with the coastline data so. Read DRM is basically you're reading a delimiter file, a CSV file, or whatever, and then you look at the lines. That's just to let you guys know. So basically, I have already specified a particular test region for you. Um, so you so remember we call that in geo regions you can specify a rectangular region north, south, east, west, the bounds, or you can specify a shape. The first example is a rectangular region. 
So all you need to so basically here I've I've already had a sample region which is shown here. But what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to also create your own particular geo region here using this example here. So this is so this is the ID. This is the parent. This is the name, and these are your bounds in north, south, east, west. Yeah. And then save geo equals false means you're not saving the geo region. You're not saving. It, um, not, you're not saving it to be caught later on. This is just a temporary one. Um, so in so you can like basically copy and paste, and then you can define your own. Uh, you can define your own boundaries here, and then uh, you can plot them. Uh, you can plot them later as well. Is the notebook loading? Yeah. Yes, it's loading. It's loading. It's loading. Uh, yes, because it's Cairo maybe. Cairo maybe will take a while. What is the name? Sorry, using you know, it's dual region, which means you're not in the correct folder. Yeah, it'll take, it'll take about, I think, a minute to load because it's chiral making, for chiral making. So I so it's now you've got you can't everything with it. You load everything here. Yeah. So I'm just trying to define everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. Uh, Pluto dot run. That's it. Uh, capital F. Okay. Uh, just right No, you don't have to. Uh, uh, you, it will detect automatically? No, it won't detect automatically. You have to. Uh, just open the thing again. Uh, no. So, um, yes. Then it will give you a browser. And then you can go and then you go and then you go. And then when you there's an option to open the file. If you go inside the open file, you should be able to see it. Yes. So open a notebook. So here you uh, know, this one? Click inside. There's some structure. Oh, okay. See? Yes. We can just go to the web page. Just to have it open. Something's not wrong. So why, why is it? Okay. Yeah, that was because I was activating the... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... And then what happened? Why is it not working? Um, no, because NC data says it's not working. I don't know if you need so to do... It's about... Let me see if I can find the error. I think the, because the problem is that what you're doing is... You don't need to specify this. You just need to specify the coordinates. Do you need to specify the uh, ID as well? The problem is that NCDSS is not loading on this part. Uh, NCDSS is not loading on this part. Uh, let me see what does. You also need the geo2 and this one. I know, I know, yes, but uh, it should be global or should I change? 
uh, it's not it to get more. This is around this. As in, it just needs to be bigger than this one. Yes, it is. So it's the glue. So the glue is fine. It just is. It's okay now. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's just uh, ID. It's just the ID, but because you're not saving it, you don't save. So say geo means that you are saving it to be called in the future. Alright. You want another shell? No, no, no. Oh yes, sir. Another They use other libraries for code. Okay. okay. And which are not the same one that I'm using. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. So that, that's what I do. I, I always use the binary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So see here. I have a second one. Can you Google NC data? I want to play a second one below and then you can do all the points. Copy everything. Yeah, we need to because you have specified that it's a right. So uh, there might be a quick way to uh, to sort it. Yeah. So we need to tell. Yeah. Um, go go on GitHub. Oh, oh yeah, or oh, docs, docs, docs. Um, what about known issues? It has been North South East West. North South East West. Sorry. Okay. Uh, No, you're not using yeah. custom that's in the okay. no, uh, so Can you on your best. system okay. uh, type so, locate ncdfso and the shell command? So we have to know uh, where we're going to run it. Uh, Yeah. Because north, south, east, west. Oh, okay. 
I can I can a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can I can a lot of work. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's for our rectangular region. And it's also possible to do the same for a non rectilinear region or rather a shape. So basically, this is an example a poly region, a polygon region. Um, and then this is for, for example, this is for uh, South Asia, for example, South, uh, South, the South Indian, uh, the Indian subcontinent, for example. Um, based on the time, I don't think we have to do this anymore. But um, what I wanted to show you is that you can do is that you can do basically here. You have uh, a lancy mask, so basically it's. Um, uh, so basically, this is the topography. This is the earth topography here, and you can basically create something from. So basically, this is a geo region, and you have the longitude and latitudes loaded for this topography here. What you can do is that you can create a grid region from the original global longitude and latitudes. You have a geo region and you can extract gridded information for that particular geo region. 
and then you can extract it and then you can just plot it like this. Um, it's already 12, so I think we ran out of time, yeah. more or less. About five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but this is the two, this is what I wanted to show you for Joe regions that you can do an extraction of you can do an extraction for uh, graded data sets, and then you can base, and then you have the and then you can just do the analysis here. So it's yeah. like a shape file. Kind of, yeah. But um, I feel like it's just more basic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, easy, it's more basic yeah. than There's no more. There's no like. Uh, no, like have the conversion between this yes. and that and that and that. Specify your shape. Yeah. Grab everything. And then, uh, if you want, and then this, I just recently added functionalities to get the etopo, uh, etopo lens, etopo grids. But I think that's uh, something that you can explore on your own. I will have the documentation for all of this up in maybe a month or so. Cause all this summer, cause. I need to go back and revise the documentation again, but I will be putting out updated documentation for all of this eventually, probably in a, in a month or so. But I just wanted to introduce to you this particular package here. Yeah, and then you can use this to define and download data sets from other, from for uh, for like reanalysis or satellite data sets. So. Yeah, so I actually just wanted to go through a lot of different things, but but I okay. So uh, you guys me, you guys mind me giving giving like a five minute summary of everything, everything left. Okay, so basically you notice that you have a rectangular region and a poly region. These are types which I think other people have mentioned, but this is how you define your different types here. So you have, uh, so basically each struct is a different type, and then you have your fields in your struct. But the thing, uh, so for example, so so in Joe regions you have different types, and then different types when you pass different types. For example, you see this one, a rect a rect region for this particular function called Joe regions has a particular has a particular method. If you do a poly region. You see the method is different. You see the function is different. You have the same function name, but if you, if but if you can you can do it such that for, you have the same function name, but if you give it a different type, you give different results. So for example, like a rectangular region is just a rectangle, so you only have the so the bounds is the same as the shape, but for a polygon you have the shape and you have the north south east west boundaries, so. Quad geo region, for example, if you pass it a rectangular region, will only pass, you will only get the bounds. Whereas if you pass it a polygon region, you will get the bounds and you will get the shape, and you will be able to plot that shape uh, separately from the bounds. So the bounds would be like a rectangle, and then you have the shape inside. Yeah. So this is a this is. Uh, this is what we call multiple dispatch in Julia, where you have different function, where you have the same function name, but depending on what type you put into your function, you can get different results. So for, so for example, if you want to download something, you can just use the function name download. And, but in the download, you specify a different method. You specify that I want, you specify a type, for example, for uh, inside data. You can just use the download method for insa data, and then you use a, and then you run through a completely different method as compared to if I had a download function for precipitation data, for example. You can always you can do this using struct types. Yeah. So you can also do topography. Now, so precipitation. I wanted to give you guys an example of how I applied geo regions to this. Um, so. Yeah, I was going to say I was going to say that using types is easier than using dictionaries because it's because essentially when I first started out I was using dictionaries and it was messy as hell. Um, but um, it's but if you use types, everything becomes a lot simpler. So you see, in Pacific for precipitation data for NASA, for example, you have trim, you have image, you have hourly, you have daily, you have monthly. But you can all do download, 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 download because I have different types for different data sets. Yeah. 
A lot simpler, a lot easier. Easier. Um, so for example, so yeah, see, I merge half hourly, every thirty minutes. I merge daily. Uh, and how you, how I and the thing is, you can you can just do this because inside each of these struct types, you can contain information that will give you the path, that will give you the website or the link for to download uh, these from this from, and it's different for different data sets, different types. And then you can, and then you can just download, and then it goes, yeah. So basically, I was also going to say that NASA precipitation uses the, uses NC data sets. There's a lot of nifty tricks in NC data sets. For example, um, if you load, if you can, you can. So basically, um, best pro, best practice during coding is to not keep defining new arrays inside when you do, because when you have four loops, right, you if you want to modify an array, you don't want to keep redefining the array and reallocating it because that will take out a lot of memory. Um, you can use NC datasets to load stuff in place. I will be putting up these slides so you can have a look at the code later. But you can have a look at the code later, but basically load in place inside a temporary array. But um, just a note, because uh, what I did is because um, I use and, and after that I use geo regions to specify the longitude and latitude coordinates that I just wanted to grab, so I didn't have to download the entire file, which is big. I just so I can I can save space and download only the data I need. Yeah. So you see you, you see the example on the right. Yeah. And then for loops are fast. And if you use NC data sets, if you open large files and you keep loading the data, it might cause memory overflow. So it's always best to use in-place loading. You have you define one array at the start, and you just load in place and replace. You keep replacing the data, for example. So you load and then you uh, you load and then you save. Yeah. I wanted to introduce view, which allows you to split arrays, but uh, view is commonly used to just view certain segments uh, of an array, save memory much faster. Um, yeah, but and then I also just wanted to outline how I created how I created packages. So for example, I have a package, I have a package, I have different components, and for each of and I also have actions. So for example, NASA precipitation, I have the components which are the data sets and the geographic region. So I specify the data set that I want in the geographic region. Uh, and then I perform the action, which is the download and the extraction and the analysis, for example. So um, examples if down here for NASA precipitation, I have I have an entire I have for data sets. I have an essay uh, for data sets, the different so I can spe so I specify all the different data sets in structs, example, and I have functions that will tell me for each data set I for so for example if I call the iMerge, the iMerge half hourly already has a specific link or specific website address that you can just put into the struct and define it there and then just and then after that you define it here and then it's very easy from there on for to the, after you define the data set here to then use it in download and extraction and analysis for example. Yeah. Same for era five view analysis. You have data set, you have geographic region, but you also have like a variable so you want to specify the different variables like pressure, temperature that you want to download, for example. So again here data set, region, and variable, you specify these three, and once you specify these three, then everything else will come more or less naturally. You just have to, you just have to do multiple dispatch to, um, and you have for different function types for different downloads, so you have different methods for different data sets and different regions. So it becomes, but this is kind of like the workflow process that I've been using, and I wanted to go through Mara tool as well, but, um, but um, I was like, how do I group the different data sets? How do you have list? How do you define the variables in relation to the data sets? Because different data sets were different variables. For example, um, so what should a data set type contain? 
but I don't think uh, we have time to we don't have time to do this right now. It's already twelve fifteen, and I'm sorry for guy for keeping you guys no, no, over no, time. No, no, but no. I want. But, it was super necessary. Yeah, yeah, but um, this but I will upload all these, and you can peruse at your own time. And if you have questions, you can always reach out to me, and I will I will answer them as best as I can. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of what I want to do. Go through. Is there any other Thank questions? You. Uh, this is not a question, it's just an observation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm very new to Julia. Mm -hmm. This is my first experience yeah, with Julia. Yeah. And this uh, has been the most helpful thing. Yeah. This should have been the first yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This has been the most helpful thing until now yeah. for me. Yeah. Okay. It, was most, it was like they actually wanted to arrange it for the first day, but other, they were like, time, like, it, we was, we, they, even when you reach out to us, it was the last day, but they, wanted to push it to the first day then but there were time commitments and issues so people could yeah. so, sorry about that but um, no because now we're going home a lot uh, yeah more prepared <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> we, we now became more Julian all of us yeah. <laughs> <laughs>